بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على كل أمور الدنيا والدين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وش enjoy I to them a uh, gold and uh, and rocks are the same I to the, the
rūya anna Allah ta'ala lamma arada dunya ala nabiyyina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam qala lahu wa la anqusuka wa la anqusuka min akhiratika shay'an khassahu bidhalika fadalla ala anna lighayrihi nuqsan illa an yatafaddala Allahu alayhi bidhalik right, and the, the other proof that Imam Ghazali says about this because you know this kind of things people might, people might argue and they might say who says if I get more in this dunya you know I have less in the hereafter I mean people will be very quick to argue this point Imam Ghazali is putting down and if you look at Imam Ghazali's books he never says something without a dalil he will always give the proofs from the Quran from the Sunnah and from the Hadith right, to show that actually it, is, it does happen Right, if you know, it, uh, especially when he speaks about things of the of the hereafter, right? So he says the proof here is that you see for Rasulullah Sallallahu when Allah offered to Rasulullah Sallam to have whatever of the dunya that he wants, and in doing that, Allah promised him that Allah will not reduce his akhirah uh, in any way, right, which means that usually when Allah gives people the, the, the dunya, right, there is a reduction in the akhirah, right? So but for Rasulullah because Allah wants to give him, you know, whatever He wants to give him. Right, he assures Rasulullah right, that you know that, that even if all of his wealth in this dunya, right, you will not be reduced right, in your uh, reward in the in the akhirah. But still, even then, Rasulullah wasalam, he rejected uh, because they know this dunya is is just is, is there's no worth to this dunya. Right? Halal, of course, haram is even worse. Right? Haram is haram. Right? Uh, halal, there's no they don't they don't see the worth. Right, in uh, in this dunya, and for Rasulullah SAW, he knows that the halal can even cause a hardness of the heart, and he's the one who taught us that. Right, he also knows that it distracts from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right, that's why it causes hardness. Right, the dunya distracts the good. The, the dunya puts a barrier between you and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The dunya, you know, very, too much obsession in this dunya, especially in what is halal. Right, obsession eh, with it uh, will cause a person to no longer taste. The sweetness of his religion, right? because they become very uh, numb right, towards things that are spiritual. So it's, it's very the ulama they used to really uh, beware of, of all of these things and not uh, take pleasure in these things. If it's there, it's there. I don't have to. You don't have to like you know it, uh, be very uh, hard about it. Right? If it's there, is there? Someone gives you it, uh, food, or so don't throw it out the window <laughs> and say I'm not going to take any more food. Right? But if it's there, it's there. Right? But that is the way our ulama, our, our ulama are. Right? They will take it, right? But they will not seek it. And you know it is, and, and they will remember that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is the one that gives all blessings. So here we have the story of Sayyidina Abdullah Sayyidina Khalid Walid Sayyidina Sayyidina Umar radiyallahu anhu. Walaqad ruwiya an aishi wa anisa the Arabic more in the English. Just I'm keep reading. I'm, I tried to I'm trying to do it from the English straight away, but I'm like I, I actually find this is actually easy. <laughs> do you see that? Do you see that? When I read, but when I read Arabic, do you understand it better? <laughs> No, but in the sense, I don't even feel like, like you know, like, like it's, it's like so much clearer. I don't know. When I look at the English, I'm like, I get very confused. <laughs> yeah, and then it's the, it's the structure and everything. MashaAllah, may Allah reward the translator. It is, Mimah Ghazali Sous are not, are not easy to translate. Right, so, I mean, Allah reward him greatly on, trans, on you know, translating his words. Because it's really, Mimah Ghazali's words are, <laughs> it, it, takes, it takes a lot from a person to try to translate his words. SubhanAllah. أي ولقد روي أن خالد بن وليد أضاف أضاف عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنهما وهيأ له طعاما فقال عمر وهذا هذا لنا فما للفقراء المهاجرين الذين ماتوا ولم يجب ولم ولم يجبعوا من خبز شعير so there was one Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid He uh, hosted Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu And he prepared for Sayyidina Umar some food And of course we, when we read all these stories It is just them reminding each other right, About focus on the akhirah So Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu says This is for us right, this, this food is for us right, So what is for those right, who were the, of, the, of the poor among the muhajirin uh, who have passed away and they never taken the, uh, their fill of barley bread. Uh, you mentioned that barley bread is very cheap bread. Uh, it's, a, it's, a fo- it's a very cheap form of food. And in this story also, we know that Sayyidina Khaib bin Walid Sayyidina Umar radiallahu uh, anhu, they actually have very good relations. Right? There are people who actually, uh, this slander Sayyidina Umar Sayyidina Khaib bin Walid, uh, saying that they don't actually have good relations, but they do have good relations. Right? Because Sayyidina Umar was the one who actually brought down Sayyidina Khaib bin Walid from his position. 
And when he went, when Zainal Umar became Khalifa, uh, he actually uh, gave the commandment that Zainal Khalid bin Walid is to be uh, denounced, or not denounced, but to be to be brought down from his demoted, to be demoted from his uh, being a general uh, in the army to just being one of the people in the army. Right? And Zainal Umar did that. Right? Why? For a very simple reason. Right, that uh, Sayyidina, uh, the, the people were ascribing the, the victories to Sayyidina Khalid Walid and not to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Sayyidina Umar was able to show that whether Khalid is on top or not, right, the victory will be there because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives victory to those who obey him. Right, it's regardless of whether or not Sayyidina Khalid Walid is, is, is up there or not. Right, so it's not, uh, uh, it's not so, so, but then there were people in, in, the, in that time, but Sayyidina Khalid Walid had no issue with that. Because those who are not attached to this dunya have no issue when you get demoted, when you you don't get the name for it, right? When you don't get the money for it, <laughs> when you don't, uh, you're not affected. You're not affected because you don't do it for, for you do it for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So Khalid had no had no issue with Sayyidina Omar demoting him into a low position. And in fact, it didn't even affect the army at all because he still was there to advise Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah, Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah bin Jarrah, who was placed at the head of the army and who was known for his humility. But Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid, they worked together right, in, in, in the army and they worked for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? There are people who would, uh, this kind of things would be an issue to them because then, then if it's an issue to you, then, you must, and then, you, then it's a clear indication to you that uh, you're not doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, that it matters to you your name is up there. Right, when it matters to you if they give you credit, right, uh, you know, that, that you did the work. Right, or whatsoever. Lah, eh. right, all of these things, subhanAllah, you know, it, it really will test your your ikhlas to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you really did it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in that in, in that time, uh, there were people who, amongst the, the tabi'in especially, right, not the sahaba, but those that come later on, right, they had issues with what Sayyidina Umar did. Uh, because they were very, like, they were very strong supporters of Sayyidina Khalid, <laughs> bin Walid, right? So it, uh, it uh, but uh, uh, so they, they used to, you know, blame Sayyidina Omar for doing that because he didn't do anything wrong. He didn't do anything wrong. Like, the people did something wrong. <laughs> people were the ones who were striving in the victory all to him. So, and Sayyidina Omar also was trying to uh, guard over Sayyidina Khalid, right? That he does not become, he doesn't get to his head, lah. Uh, in a sense, so in a sense, our brother in Islam, like he was protecting his brother in Islam from uh, feeling like that it is because of him. Of course, in the Khalid, he's he's not it's not like that right but it just that Sayyidina Omar was guarding over Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid right, so anyway they had nothing uh, ill between them but if you ever read stories of them having things ill between them right that is all the people of that time and thereafter they uh, it's, it's, it's a form of standard lah. standard or suzon of Sayyidina Omar radiallahu anhu and in fact it will be a suzon of Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid to say that he's that shallow that he you know took it, uh, took, it you know, took offense to Sayyidina Omar bringing down him, uh, bringing him from his position. Uh, to them, no one, none of them vied for position. Uh, they didn't care. But to them, it was all about serving Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So the story uh, that Khalid bin Walid received Sayyidina Omar as a guest, radiallahu anhum, on to them both, and he prepared a meal for him. Omar said, "This for us, but what is there for those poor emigrants, Muhajirin, who have died without eating the field of barley bread?" And Sayyidina Omar, he's doing, he's saying this to remind himself and Sayyidina Khalid right, Subhanallah, there were people from before us who got less right, and they have done the same as we have done or even more in good deeds so if we get such good food in this dunya, what are they getting in the akhirah? That's what Sayyidina Umar is saying right, that, that, that this muhajirun you know, uh, that who have passed away in Badr, in Uhud, in Khandaq you know, in, in all of the battles from before they all people who passed away before the uh, before Islam became rich Right, the Muslims became rich uh, before the, the wealth came flooding in to the hands of the Muslims. Uh, those who passed from before, the Sahaba used to be, uh, you know, used to be jealous of them. Right? Jealous in the form of ghibta. Uh, ghibta meaning like, like you know, ghibta is a, is a good jealousy. You mentioned before, eh? it's a good jealousy whereby like, you know, if only you were like them. Uh, whereby we don't have to be tested by this dunya. Uh, there were Sahaba who you know, had this ghibta. Uh, towards the, the companions who passed away before Islam became uh, uh, spread far and wide and wealth came into the hands of the Muslims. Because now they had a, a trial that was more difficult than jihad, <laughs> which was the trial of dunya. And in fact, Rasulullah himself said to the Sahaba that he is not afraid for them uh, poverty. 
and but he is afraid for them that the dunya will open up for them and they will rise they will, they will, they will, they will chase after it as those before them chased after it and it will destroy them as those before them destroyed them and this is uh, also one of the because he said this to them and whatever he says of fear it will happen <laughs> and whatever he says that he does not fear will never happen and whatever he says that he hopes will happen and that is the way that how he speaks so when he says you know about Ta'if, I hope that from their, their loins come people who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning there will come from their loins people who will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he says, I don't I don't worry, I, I don't fear that you know Shirik will come back into the Arabian Peninsula, meaning Shirik will never come back into the Arabian Peninsula. <laughs> and that's what that's what his words mean. And when he says I don't fear, meaning it will not happen. He has prophecy. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he says, I, but I fear for you, the dunya will open up for you. Meaning the dunya will open up for you, and and that you will you will you will you will chase after it. Meaning that you will chase after it, and it will destroy you. Meaning that it will destroy you, those who chase after it. And so he's not he's not saying you no know, things that are you know hypothetical at all. He's saying he's 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 telling them these things will happen. It's prophecy. And it will happen, and it happened. And it's happening till today, and whereby, whereby Muslims chase the dunya and they destroy everything in their path, uh, including their family and including their children, right? Just because of money, right? running after money, wanting more money, and wanting more whatever lah, like, station, name, whatever it is. Right? Even even the family is is is, is broken up right? because of all this uh, of dunya, which is not worth anything. So Sayyidina, that one is our chapter on dunya, and it's gone before. Right? The whole thing is, is all linked together. Right, so it, uh, so it's like, it's like a lot of people will stay on hurdle number three for the longest time <laughs> because just to struggle against this dunya, against what is halal and not taking so much, trying to hold on to zuhud, like all of these things takes a lot from our time eh? because they're so that the norm is not as such. But now, alhamdulillah, you know, to be minimal, right, to be to be a minimalist is a trend right now. Because they realize that you know what you, you actually have to handle much le- much less things. You know, how realize it's easier you just handle like, a few clothing, you know, a few pairs of shoes, <laughs> like, or one pair of shoe, and then when it when it dies, get another one. When it dies, get another one. <laughs> right, mashallah. I mean, it's one of you walk that way. It's one of or bag, same bag. So you will never forget anything. Because you just carry the same bag. <laughs> if you keep changing bags, you have to like alamat forgot in the other bag, and the other bag is my keys. The other bag is my. <laughs> Hey, but then you wonder, why do I even change bags? <laughs> I just carry the same bag. <laughs> Subhanallah. Do we carry bags? Can you put this down? Yeah, so I must attach your phone siwa. I see you very good. Okay, siwa. So see, when someone someone finally did this for me. She, yeah, she 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 uh, did the e- earphone thing. <laughs> so I keep losing my earphone. So I was saying. If only I had a pouch whereby I can put my earphone in the pouch and attach it to my phone, so I will never use, my, I will never lose my earphone for the speaker, right? And then someone sold it for me. She gave it to me yesterday. <laughs> so, mashallah. She was very quick. She's the same person who actually gave me the siwak gift also. Because I was like, I need to put my siwak, attach it to my phone. <laughs> right, and then straight away she took it up. It's very fast. It's like very fast. Okay, one thing they yeah, want the bahala. Very quick to get bahala. <laughs> yeah. But it's always because I just say it's a, it's a passing. It's easy, I think. It's good something. <laughs> and then, mashallah. Uh, what's this? Why is he doing that? I didn't do anything wrong. Hey, no. I think I pressed something. Then it was playing. Bismillah. Uh, Muhammad. Right. So he says this in Omar, and then and then he says here, Sayyidina Ahmad. What does he say here? Sayyidina Muhammad. فَقَالَ الْخَلِيدُ قَالَ الْخَلِيدُ لَهُمُ الْجَنَّةِ يَا أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فَقَالَ عُمَرُ لَإِنْ فَازُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ وَكَانَ هَذَا حَظَّنَا مِنَ الدُّنْيَا فقد بانوا من فقد بانوا منا بونا مبينا. Right. So 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 now Khalid Walid says that they have been 
they have they have uh they they, they got paradise yeah 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 Amirul Mu'minin like, we have all this dunya and they have paradise and Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu said then if it's if it, if it's for them to get paradise and this is our share of this world then they are they have distinguished themselves from us with clear distinction and ibanu minna it means an ibana it means it is clear how high they are above us as compared to ourselves because we have all this amount in this dunya that will minus off from our records in the akhirah and Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu who is of the of the best of the sahaba Abu Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu but even he did not find himself to be uh, free right, of 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 I mean, I mean, he has a taqwa Sayyidina Umar and he has a very strong taqwa uh, that that the more dunya you take right, the more the less there will be for you in the akhirah so mashallah sometimes and we know Nasir and Mishab of the hadith by all the du'as that are not answered that, that, that seem to not be answered they seem not answered but they are answered all du'as are answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from a sincere heart we have the good opinion of that unless a person is as in the hadith that goes uh, he is fed by the haram he is clothed by the haram right he is entire he is nourished by the haram and du'as from him are all blocked and of course there are also other hadiths of people whose du'as are blocked Right, people who break off bonds with their family members, right? All their du'as are all blocked. Right, from Allah Subhanahu. Wa Even their prayers are, uh, 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 the, the the prayers are basically, what is what you call it? Dangling, hanging. No, it's just a word for it. Anyway, uh, <laughs> can't remember the English word. My English, my English is like deteriorating. <laughs> and I can't find the English words. It is uh, not. Oh my God, Muhammad. Okay, never mind. When it comes to it, comes to me. Right, but the hadith that goes that the prayer does not go above the heads, a hand spent. Right, uh, uh, people, three people, three different sort of people. The first one is an is a leader uh, who forces himself on the people, and no one likes him. People they hate him because of his injustice. A leader. Right. Second one is a woman who uh, spends the night, and her husband is angry with her. Right. And then the ulama speak about that being his rights. That means she does not give him his rights. Right, so of course if he's angry with her about some other don't know what, right, then it's of course to try and please him. Right, but this this hadith specifically speaks about her denying him his rights. Right. So whatever are his rights now, right, and then he's you know not, not happy with her, then uh, but there are those of there are those who go on the side of wara but by any form of displeasure. Right, her prayers are not accepted. Eh? Like this woman. This is a hadith, mashallah. <laughs> so there are those who say, of course, the, the ulama they have, you know, they have mercy on us, and they say, if he's angry because of something that is his rights, or if he's angry for like you know ridiculous things, <laughs> you know, why is he angry about this? Why did I do? <laughs> right? Uh, some ulama will say that no, 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 that one is he's he's being petty, right? Uh, but uh, but some of the uh, of the women that I know. Women scholars, because the women tend to be, uh, the men tend to be, they try to be not so hard on the women. So when they give the shara of the hadith, they be like, you know, <laughs> but then if you hear the women speak about it, the women, the women, uh, uh, ulama, they will be hard <laughs> on the women, right? and they will say, you know, even if you think it's not, it's, it's not your fault, it's his fault. Just ask forgiveness. Uh, in case this hadith means any form of this, of this pleasure. Uh, in case you know, just just bring your ego down. <laughs> they will say to you. They will say to you. So the the Hababas, the Ustazah, they they are very in your face. Right? They will say things. Right? Whereas you know, like the male, um, uh, you know, a mashayikh, right? They tend to, you know, lay off <laughs> as they say that oh, this on his right. It is true. Right? Especially when, when it comes to his rights, right? That his rights are not being fulfilled. Whether it's sexual, whether it's uh, uh, even as a human being, whether you you are rude to him or whatsoever, so as as a rights as as a human being, and it's it's, and it's both ways right, in a way. Uh, but then on the others, there are those who go on the other end. Whereby because the the hadith goes, Imr abatat wa zawjah alaha ghalib or sahib, right? A woman who sleeps and her her husband is angry with her. Right? Her prayers are not accepted. Her prayers are angry. On top of it, Allah is the best of judges, lah. Right? Allah will judge whether or not her prayers deserve to be. To be dangling on her head and it's a good life. This is right on my head. Not stranded. So it's suspended. S. Suspended. That is the word. <laughs> suspended. Right. It's suspended. It's a correct word. Suspended. Right. Uh, above her. So she, the, uh, the, the teachers will, will say, you know what? If you really care about your prayers, just and, and in fact, it, this is what brings uh, happiness and also tranquility. Right. Uh, in the family, when someone steps forth to ask for forgiveness. 
even if it's not your fault and you do something to make them happy so in a sense in a sense this hadith ensures right that uh, the night is not spent with anger between the couple like, it ensures that okay, so so if, if if he's not gonna gonna stand up to it <laughs> then you stand up to it right? and that actually preserves uh, it preserves harmony Right, that you don't and this one thing you know, one of the rules of marriage my father put the toilet that you all see him before my father has all these things that he places all around the house we notice like, all these posters right I mean, I don't have all of them already but it's been since I was like 9 years old <laughs> so I remember every single one of them <laughs> all these posters and there's one poster about rules of a happy marriage which I've been reading since I was 9 years old <laughs> and I remember that one of them is never go to bed with an argument uh, uh, unsettled one of the rules of marriage right it's some he, oh, he buys all these from popular rules store <laughs> yeah, but I think it, I mean it does help us I guess because we do all these things right? and it does now it does ring in our head right? never to allow you know it, uh, him to just be angry you know and, and keep it or don't allow her on both ends don't allow her to be angry and keep it or on your on your end if you're angry don't keep it <laughs> right? just, just you don't have to you don't have to let it out let it out then let it go. Right? Because some people, they said, tell me, I'm going to marriage with you. I'm coming back here. Right? But some people, uh, they, they, when they say to me, that, oh, a lot of, you know, it's a lot of, you know, pent up anger. Right? But who's penting it up? Who? Who's making you pent it up? You see, you have a lot of pent up uh, grievances, pent up anger, pent up this, pent up that. Who is making you pent it up? Can't you let it slide? <laughs> Right, so like they say, oh, like you know, he leaves his clothes here and there, he does it, does it. It's all faults, yeah, faults. But who makes it build up, or who allows it to build up? You. You allow it to build up. If you allow it to just not build up, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I mean, in a sense, you be a very happy person, <laughs> can. Right, yeah. So, so it's, it's like, I mean, it is simple. <laughs> it's a matter. It's a matter of choice. It's a matter of choice. Uh, you choose to hold on, or you choose to just. Forget it. Right? They say all this, all these like stories of wisdom, whereby people's good deeds scrape in the on the stone. You know, all the focus lah, <laughs> and people's bad deeds right in the sand. The kind of thing, you know, like but you forget their bad deeds. You just forget. If they are bad deeds, you forget about it. The deeds right on the stone. Yeah, correct. Remember Calm. Right? That means that means it will never disappear from your memory. Remember, you think that one is in this toilet? <laughs> no, it's in another toilet. Uh. <laughs> I know that I want to know the value of an hour. Ah, no, I know the value. The value of one second, one minute, millisecond. You go like this. My father been doing it since I was young. But any, any, it's it's etched in our memory. Now I hope, I wish that he had just done hadis on the walls, not like on the walls. Yeah, on the walls. They memorize all the hadis. They memorize all these quotes. Yeah, but I guess walls you don't read it. Yeah. Unless <laughs> you sit there and you read everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I remember a big one. You know, like, all these good hadiths. Just put a big one on the walls. And then your, your kids every day, like rules of you know uh, of, of a happy life, for example. You know, so you I mean you need to teach our children or our, especially our girls like how to be happy in you know in yourself. With Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, be happy. Don't have your happiness hinge on anybody. At all, not even your parents, not even your 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 family, not even don't hinge on people, because people die, people disappoint, people you know people are people. In the in the in the chapter of people, right? People are not they are not they are not permanent. Right? And it's one of the strengths of when you talk about strong women, strong women right are strong in themselves with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right? That's what this what is being strong is about. So I mean, my mother from young she will always drill this card into us. You know, like, like if people uh, tease us or whatsoever, you cry. For what you cry? And then she the way she would, she would respond. Eh? You cry for what? The way he called me, whatever. Are you dead? No. Then don't cry. <laughs> Very easy. And I think this is the thing about Tarbiya. It's how we grow up to just block off people. If you want to block off, you can off. They call you whatever you want to call you. Whatever. <laughs> you know, all you care is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thinks. And that is more scary, actually. <laughs> like what Allah thinks of you and what Allah, what Allah sees of you. And subhanallah. That, that is tarbiyah. That is tarbiyah. So then, don't be gumbing, just say. Don't be gumbing, gumbing, gumbing. 
Subhanallah. Okay, anyway, going back here. Like, so, so anyway, uh, the one is about the, the about the prayers not being accepted, and the third one is is about two brothers who are uh, who did, who are uh, fighting. That means for as long as they're in a state of fighting, then they're not talking to each other. And yeah, even even in this part of the hadith, the ulama differ. Like some say two brothers, meaning two blood brothers. Right? And some say no, brothers in Islam. Right? So even if you have a friend right, uh, who's a Muslim, so just they have the ones who have the minimum right, as to what the hadith means, and if on the side of warah, right, on being scrupulous about what the hadith means. So with a woman, okay, only when he's upset about his rights, right, and he's denying of his rights. Uh, and then and then he's upset, he's angry. Then your prayers are not accepted. And some will go on that. It's like any form of you know petty displeasure <laughs> right, that he might have, and just try to just appease him. You know, try to uh, make him laugh. Try to which I do. For me, for me, I, it, it works. Like, actually, it works. Whenever my husband's upset with me, I come home late. It's always the same story. Come home late for day. <laughs> the same story when he's angry with me, <laughs> being put out for <laughs> day. But for me, all kinds of. Power banks, but they all die also. <laughs> all the are dead. <laughs> all the <laughs> So who won't get angry, right? So come home. I know. He, I know he's angry. I know he's angry. And there's nothing I can do to reverse it because the phone is dead and the power bank is dead. I came back past eleven o'clock. For example, I came back late because sometimes students ask a lot of questions. I will stay behind. Come back really late. So he gets upset. He gets worried. Worried and upset. So and I don't want him to, to, to sleep. You know, because of the hadith lah, it's <laughs> more acceptance, right? And it's his right, right, to actually for me to just update where where I am. Uh, it is his right, right? So it's Subhanallah. Thanks. Hawla wa laqwa taala billah. Like why are we so absent-minded? Hawla wa But then then I will try my best at night because because of the hadith. Because of the hadith. I'll do something or buy something along the way. Make better even later. But whatever I know that will make him at least crack a smile, you know, or make a, or just do something silly. I, I know I know how to get him to smile. Right, so do now he knows. I know what I can say to make his face just to just smile a bit. <laughs> then you can pass. <laughs> and it helps that. And it helps with the it helps with the marriage. It helps a lot with the marriage. Right, that you don't uh, you know. You, 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 you ease the heart of your so when it comes to hadith when it comes to hadith so much wisdom in hadith it's not about rights anymore it's really about wisdom it's about just do things right you know it's not about you know whether why must I why should I it's not about that it's about what makes life easier for everybody around and better and of course the third, the third one is about the one I mentioned about the, the, the brothers right so whether it's blood brothers not they're fighting and not talking to each other, or Muslims in Islam. Uh, I mean, Muslims brotherhood in Islam. Right? So uh, friends who have cut off right? and and with, with anger right? and not talking to each other. Right? Basically, for friendship that basically fades because of circumstances, that's not an issue. Right? Because if you see them, you still salam them, and you're still happy and whatsoever. Right? The one that's an issue is when you're angry and you don't want to talk to the to the serious person. That was an issue. So the ulama, some of them, they say on the side of Wara, it counts also these people. Right? The people whom uh, you have cut off and they are not your family members, but you cut off out of anger uh, uh, with them. It should not be done. Right? And when we look at it in Islam, subhanAllah, uh, it should not be done. Why? Because everyone deserves... Because in a sense, in doing that, that if let's say there is a da'wah right, from them to you or from you to them, uh, you are denying yourself of the goodness. It can come from yourself to them or from them to you, right? Either way, right? So, so even if like, they, 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 they did the worst thing, of for example, uh, Naudzubillah, they, they left Islam, for example, right? Then, then who's going to reach out to them if you cut off from them? Right? If everybody cuts off from them, then then what? Right? No one's going to reach out to them. Right? So then there's a the worst case possible if you think about it, right? And everything, everything before that is lesser. Right? It's, it's, it's anything before shirik or like, it's, it's, it's lesser than shirik. Right? Shirik is the worst thing someone could do. And if that you're not allowed to cut off, then you know, subhanallah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best of what are the meanings of this hadith. Right? So, so, Sayyidina, so this was Sayyidina Umar and Sayyidina, and Sayyidina Khalid ibn Walid. And it says here, وَرُوِيَا وَرُوِيَا أَنَّ عُمَرَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ عَطِشَ يَوْمًا فَدَعَا بِمَا إِنْ فَأَعْطَاهُ رَجُلٌ إِدَاوَةً فيها ماء نبذ فيه تمرات 
فلما قربها عمر من فيه وجد الماء باردا حلوا فأمسك وقال أواه فقال الرجل والله ما 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 علوته حلاوة يا أمير المؤمنين فقال عمر رضي الله عنه ذلك الذي منعني منه ويحك لولا الآخرة لشاركناكم في عيشكم سبحان الله and so Zainab also did so once Zainab was thirsty and someone gave him he asked for a drink right, and his servant bought him a, 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 a water right, in which he had placed some dates inside he sweetened the water right, so now, now we're thinking about our, all our sweet water eh? <laughs> and it is uh, actually Subhanallah, I'll just say it uh, It is a, a bad habit if a person always finds that whenever they want to drink a drink, it has to be sweet. It's a very bad habit. Right? Try to you know, make, make your default drink water. Right? Default. Right? And only when people serve you, or you know, that's it, when they serve you. <laughs> and then you drink sweet water, or maybe in the mornings, whatever, like, try to reduce. Right? But it's, I mean, I know people who every single meal comes with a sweet drink. Every single meal. It's really, it's really not good for your health, not good for your nafsu, not good for your iman, it's not good for anything. <laughs> right, to have a sweet drink next to you with every single meal. Right, it's, it's really subhanAllah. And here Sayyidina Omar, you know, he, when, when, he, when he brought the water to his mouth, he found the water cold and sweet. So he refrained from drinking it. And he said, ugh. <laughs> and, he said, and he was like, mm, up in there, you know. <laughs> and the servant thought he did well. You know? The servant thought, was like, I put the sweet in. <laughs> so I made it sweet, I made it cold. And the man exclaimed, by Allah, I have not neglected to sweeten it. Yeah, I mean, I, I have made it sweet for you. Like, why, why don't you like it? <laughs> and he said that it is, it said, by Allah, I have, Sayyidina Omar said, that is what stopped me from drinking it. Because you, 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 you made the water nice, you know, to, 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 to tantalize my nafsu, <laughs> right, to please my nafsu. And Sayyidina Omar said, woe unto you, but for the hereafter, we will participate with you in your way. Like, okay, what it means basically is that if it not if it's not for our fear that we will have less in the hereafter, right? We will have all these things also with all of you, but it's because we fear the hereafter that we refrain right, from from eating and drinking the way you all eat and drink. That's why I know. Why these books? It's really you see not for the faint hearted. <laughs> Imam Ghazali's books, like because and, and, and you have to come to Imam Ghazali's understanding this is this was the state of the Muslims. They had this state. Because there are people whom I know that they are very skept they, they, they are very skeptical of Imam Ghazali's books. Like really cool. Like something else you cannot is it. Like you know, it's, they say it's too strict, it's too strict. Basically Imam Ghazali he leans on the side of Wara. Right? And he, and basically he's someone who understands this dunya. And to him, it's not worth it, right, to trade your akhirah for this dunya, right? Our society, we are all on the mindset of what's the minimum I need to do as a Muslim, <laughs> right? So when anyone says to do a bit more, right, they should say it's too strict, it's too much. Like why? For what? Right? Because they, they just give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the minimum of what is required. Now you get the minimum, then you get the minimum. When the ulama say, if you give the minimum, you will get the minimum. And if you give the maximum of yourself, then you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's maximum is without limit. So it's on you what you want. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah help us uh, internalize all these meanings and understand these meanings. So in a sense, as mentioned from last week, we will, we will take steps. Right? So from now on, you know, uh, only give your children water, plain water, or yourself plain water. Right, uh, for myself, my mother early in the morning she she never give us my milk. She always give water. So she give breakfast when I, when I was growing up. She give breakfast. Uh, that's it lah. There was no Horlicks or Milo or there was no hot drink. Right, so right now after after today, I don't need a hot drink in the morning. Right? I know of people like they they on my own like in North whatsoever like they they need a hot drink to wake up in the morning because the nerves is trained on it. It's trained on it, so it's difficult to wake up without a hot drink. <laughs> a tea, coffee, so all, all train at the beginning of the And now it's the last, the last is accustomed to having a hot drink, they can wake up. The issue can. 
sorry, try to be okay with water. You can make up on water, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this will not only Fatiha. Be Fatiha, you all wake me up. Then <laughs> you drink the water. The water. You will wake up with the yakin that you have, inshallah. <laughs> anyway, so Allah, it's, it's a, it's a, it, it is a, the culture. Like, it does this to us, the culture. It's every morning a sweet drink. Every morning, you know, the amount of sugar in my nose. <laughs> Once in a while, if can not at all. <laughs> right, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Okay, um, but as I was saying that all this is from from Ghazali, you're hearing the you're hearing people who are at you know the the, the highest end of it, right? And we are at some sort of place <laughs> where we are at. The last line. Woe to you! <laughs> is it the one? No, the, but the, but the hereafter, you, but but for the hereafter, mm. but it's good. Okay, the Arabic says, like, if not for the hereafter, if not for our for our desire for the hereafter, oh. mm. we would partake in your delights of this dunya. That's what it means. It means that they they, they gave him this sweet water. Mm. He said, I would drink it, right? But because I desire the hereafter, I don't want this kind of things. Don't give these things to me. That's what it means. <laughs> you get how. It, it's, it's what he means, what he means. So sometimes you can see the, even the, even the translator pun, because the Arabic is like that. And the Arabic is, if not for this. So he goes, so Shaina Omar, he goes to the Arabic. And Shaina Omar goes, right, uh, Shaina Muhammad, he goes, he goes, what's the story? Yeah. Uh, he said, Wallahi, ma, ma alawtuhu halawatan ya amir al-minin. فقال عمر عنه ذلك الذي منعني منه ويحك لولا الآخرة لشاركناكم في عيشكم لولا الآخرة لشاركناكم في عيشكم لا لا إس 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 لشاركناكم في عيشكم لولا الآخرة so if not for our desire for the akhirah, if not for our fear for the akhirah, if not for the akhirah, right, we would have shared with you in your aish, that means in your livelihood, in the way you live life. So we will live life the way you live life. But because of our of our our fear for the hereafter, we don't live the way you all live. Because if not for akhirah, they will have indulged in all yeah. of this yeah. uh, really life. Huh? Yeah. So the only thing that is stopping them from, from indulging in this holy life is, the, is their fear of the Akhirah or their desire for the Akhirah. You can look at the English line. Eh? So I say what he means, but, but for the hereafter, we will participate with you in your worldly life. So I wonder about my, my, my student who says she read the entire book in one day. You can't read this book in one day. It's really, it's not, it's not a book to be read in one day. Right, number 10. العاشرة الحسب والحساب واللوم والتعيير في ترك الأدب في أخذ فضول وطلب الشهوات فإن الدنيا حلالها حساب والحرامها عقاب وزينتها إلى تبا إلى تبابل سبحان الله. Right, so he says here and the number ten one the number ten. Right, is that is that overeating results in confinement and punitive reckoning, right, and blame and condemnation for the lack of propriety involved in excessive acquisition and the pursuit of lustful desires. Okay, let me just explain this part. Eh? Right, so <laughs> the is really the salma. Al-hasabu wal hisabu. Eh, sorry. الحبس سوري الحبس والحساب الحبس الحبس means to be to be like trapped right so when you are because when when you are seeking the the halal and you are spending you are spending the while you are seeking the halal right it can be a form of like it traps you because you are you are tied up right by seeking all these halal things by eating this thing that and your mind is like what we mentioned earlier on your mind is your mind is occupied with how you're gonna Acquire all these delights, right? or like when am I going to travel to this country and you know and, and have my amazing resort stay there? Or, you know, like it, it, there's, a, there's a form of, of, of uh, imprisonment, 
I, like it's a mental imprisonment because you want to go to this place and this place and this place and this place and this place. It's a form of indulging in the halal. It is. Like all these dreams of going to luxurious places. And then you go one after another. And of course, it's halal. No one's saying it's haram. It's halal. Right, but he's, he doesn't he's missing out the 10, the 10 bad impacts of seeking the halal. And so it's so so at the end of the day, all these things are halal. You can, you know, aim to go on vacation to all these amazing places. You can. No one thing is wrong. Right? But it is you know, it confines you. Right? It it traps your mind. Right? It uh it takes your money away. So <laughs> and you can't do good things with it. And because you want especially if you're doing all these things not for uh akhira purpose. With Akhirah purpose, for example, you want to go to Makkah and Medina, you want to go to uh, study Islam, you want to go uh, to the, the, the places of of uh, Islamic heritage, or whatsoever. Lah. Or even you want to go to, 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 to natural landscapes uh, to to get more in touch with your inner, with, with your soul, and to realign yourself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to take a break from the dunya. Right, with all these niyats, right, to realign, to focus on your ibadah, right, all of these things, right, then, you know, for you, whatever you intend. Right, but if people are just doing it for the sake of luxury, because you just want to, you know, pamper yourself, you know, a bit, it's not haram. But all these 10 things come in, all these 10 negative uh, consequences. So there is nowhere in here where he says that you get sinful. And there's no haram there. Uh, but it just that it does these things to you. You see that? So less reward for you in the hereafter. Then say you get punished for it. Unless you indulge in the haram lah. And there is punishment for you. And the Muslim I understand what he's saying here. So we'll burn judge Imam Ghazali by saying, Why is he so <laughs> everything also cannot? He's not saying cannot, he's saying that yani, there's a lot of negativity, uh negative negative consequences that come with it. Uh, especially of your soul. So he was as Imam Ghazali as like like really an elderly and uh, giving us advice after having gone through life and studied life and set a human being, he's giving us advice. Like all of these things waste your time. Like understand this. Like, and, and they give you nothing. They give you, you know, in a sense he, he does all of this uh, you know uh, advice like, basically. So al habas wal hisab. Hisab meaning you have more more to account for on the day of judgment. Right? More hisab. And there is blame. And there is blame and censure uh, uh, when someone does not follow the adab right, in taking what is excessive and when they follow their shahawat. But in the dunya halaluha hisabun. To understand that dunya, the halal of this dunya is to be accounted for. Hisawun right? meaning that it's counted. And so the halal can be questionable. And it's the famous story of uh, Bahlul. And so Bahlul, the brother of, uh, of Harun al Rashid, you mentioned the story before, and whereby Harun al Rashid, you know, he came up to, ba- I mean, there was once he was talking to his brother Bahlul, right? And, and, uh, and, and he saw Bahlul at the graveyard. And then he was picking me between the bones, and he said, "What are you doing? You know, and you're doing something that is, you know, it's, it's, it's like a crazy thing to do. I right? sitting out in the graveyard, hanging out in the graveyard, so your, your grave friends, right, and picking with the bones." And Bahlu says, "Well, I was looking through the bones, and I don't see. I'm, I'm not able to distinguish the bone of the king and the bone of the pauper. Same. Okay. He's giving. You know, Bahlu, he's he's this kind of um, you would say like a wali." Right, who did they speak in riddles? Right, they understand very high things about this dunya. Right, and but people because they're so they're so deep in their state, people think them crazy. Right? they seem crazy. Right, so when 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 his brother said to him, you know, like you know, people think that you're crazy. Then he says, I don't know who's more crazy. <laughs> for me, on day of judgment, I answer for this shirt on my back, right, and the piece of of bread that I eat every day. Well, you have to answer for that horse and that castle and that, you know, who's crazy here? <laughs> and you're, you're putting up more things to answer for. The more you have, the more you answer. Right, it's basically that. Right, so he said, who's being crazy here? I only have like three things to answer. Four things <laughs> to answer for. <laughs> May Allah help us. May Allah have mercy on us. May Allah have mercy on, you know, uh, the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, especially those towards the end of time. 
the better so some says to hold on to this religion is that holding on to hot coal this is what he means right? because this religion is, is really very wide and very deep right? so there are a lot of aspects of Islam that has been let go of because just to hold on to this thing, for example, Zuhud. Right? Zuhud is the one thing that's very hard in our time to hold on to. So I people say Zuhud is the Zuhud of the heart. It is true. It's the Zuhud of the heart that you don't be attached to things. But how many of us can see you're not attached? And how many of you can see for, for, for surety that you're not attached? People can see it. People always say, oh, Zuhud is the Zuhud of the heart. Zuhud is the Zuhud of the heart. Yeah, I do actually have it. <laughs> and is your heart actually, you know, Zahid? Subhanallah. <laughs> I'm not sure who claims that. I mean, who in our time claims that, oh, I'm not attached to any of these things around me at all. I mean, Subhanallah. <laughs> subhanallah. May Allah uh, uh, remove from our hearts the attachment to this dunya. So the dua of Imam Al Haddad in the Kulasa by now has to be memorized. Allahumma akhri qalbi kulla qadrin li dunya. وكل ما حل خلق يميل بي إلى مأسيتك أو يشيرني عن طاعتك أو يحل بيني وبين تحقق معرفة خاصة أو محبتك الخالصة. أي حقا لدعاء. أي so it's in the khulasa. It's right after the 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 zikr of prayers. You find dua right there. Right. So oh Allah, remove from my heart. Right. Any weight of this dunya, is any important space of this dunya, and any space that that the creation carries in my heart or holds in my heart. That uh, that distracts me, uh, uh, or that, that makes me sway towards uh, towards sin, right? Or it uh, it busies me from obedience, or it comes to me and within knowing you in in truth, and it comes to me and loving you uh, sincere. To Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So I understand that. So it's not that it's dosa. It's just that it just creates a lot of walls. You and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, which eventually can lead into sins. We will get further and further away from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Alhamdulillah. There was also somebody who was doing these lectures on Minaj Al Abidin, and then he was back to me and saying that it's you're, you're being too strict. And I said, I'm not even. I'm trying to act on this. <laughs> like, it's not. It's not me who's speaking. It's Imam Mazari. So it's not my opinion. I'm. I'm trying to hold on to what he's saying. I'm still, I'm myself struggling. <laughs> I learned this book how many times, but still, you know, still holding, grasping, like onto what he's saying. So it's Imam Ghazali who's speaking. Eh? If anything, you want to find fault with Imam Ghazali? Because <laughs> someone said to me that you're being too strict. It's really, it's really not me who's speaking. <laughs> I wish it was me, <laughs> but it's not me because my I'm still, you know, having stuff <laughs> and having. Attachments and having desires, having shahwa, having uh, you know all these things. You still like good food. You still like nice stuff. <laughs> so still struggling with what Imam Ghazali is saying. Allah help us. Right. So he says here. So this dunya, the halal is is to be reckoned reckoned with. I mean, the halal is uh, to be to be questioned. The haram is punishment and the beautification of this dunya. Like he says here. Wait, so, uh, and the beautification of this dunya, right? He calls it what? Perdition. Perdition. Mm-hmm. The beautification, the pursuit. This is the pursuit. Oh, it's not there. It's not there. Right. So, uh, wazina uh, tuha, ila, yeah, you bring you bring it to disaster, lah, basically. You bring it to disaster. فهذه جملة العشرة وفي إحداها كفاية لمن نظر لنفسه فعليك أيها المجتهد بالإحتياط البالغ في 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 القوت كي لا تقع في حرام أو شبهة فيلزمك العذاب ثم بالاقتصار من الحلال على ما يكون عقدة على عبادة الله تعالى فلا تقع في الشر فتبقى في الحساب وفي حبس والحساب والله سبحانه والله سبحانه ودي التوفيق. هاي سو هي سيسيا سو دي سال التن the ten things that will that will afflict you if you go into the haram into the, into the halal in excess and he says any one of them should be enough 
right? Any one of them should be enough to stop you, right, from uh, stop you from going into excessiveness. Any one of these ten consequences should be enough. You don't need ten. Right? One of them should be enough. Right? So look into it at uh, yourselves and internalize this. And it's on you, oh, the one who is striving. Alhamdulillah, it's going as that. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I think he also knows that what he's writing here, to him, it is reality. And it is the situation of life. But he knows that, I mean, being a teacher, he knows that because you are So you're all strivers, okay? You're striving. You're going to strive on this. You're going to try your best. You're going to go step by step. Right? You're going to go on this path towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to be determined and you need to not make excuses. Right? So that's what he's saying. So, so فَعَلَيْكَ أَيُّهَا الْمُجْدَهِدُ Right, بِالْإِحْتِيَاطِ الْبَالِغِ فِي الْقُوتِ Right, and he says, Oh, you're the one who is striving to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, that you must have the highest form of caution. Right, or ihtiyat meaning like to be very particular about what you feed yourself. Have the highest form of, you know, uh, caution. Be very particular in what you put into your mouths. Right, uh, so that you don't fall into the haram or the shubahat. Right, and if you fall into the haram or shubahat, then it will be compulsory on you with the punishment. And then to really limit or minimize the halal, right, so that it will not be something, right, uh, uh, so from the halal, right, to, to, to you to take from the halal what is enough for you to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make sure your halal will be. Uh, things that will be that will prepare you in your worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also in, in, in English right so uh, do not lapse that means unlawful right? and also restrict your, your halal right, to the amount required to prepare for worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah is the one right? and that and so that you don't fall into the evil like of uh, of staying in a place of uh, of confinement and also having to account for all the halal that you have taken Allah subhanahu wa liyul tawfiq And our time is even worse because our time the halal comes with a lot of uh, the halal comes with a lot of rubbish uh, so in our world of plastics uh, the, 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 the question will, will extend into all of these wrappings that you're eating all this you know, uh, junk food that come with all these wrappings so again the food itself is not <laughs> required it's not wajib food and it comes with all of this, uh, uh, what's it, non, non, uh, this, 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 this non-biodegradable su- uh, substances, this plastics. We don't know on day of judgment. Eh? How how do you even answer for that? And the amount of plastic. This is just even the, the the packet drink, the plastic straw, and the plastic around the plastic straw. Right? I mean, all of these things. You wonder, you know, how on day of judgment. Eh? How will it? May Allah have mercy on us, <laughs> and Allah really, really, really have mercy on us because it's our, it's our time, and our culture. <laughs> <All panic. laughs> but it just, it is said, right? So that it will, it, it begins to itch on you. Right? If it's not said, then we go through life anyway, right? and never, never even occurring to us that do I even have to buy this? Like, and like someone one gave, one someone once gave me a, this kind of re- reusable uh, cup. Uh, we can buy your coffee in and you know whatsoever. And so I took it and they should give me the, this um, metal straw. And I took it also. No, I never used it. So I said, don't you buy these things? <laughs> and you don't actually go out and, and buy drinks. I don't actually buy drinks. But people buy for me. So my reusable cup is still not used. <laughs> but people buy for me things and it's all in the plastic cups. Right? In a sense, I'm saying like, go buy for me things. Like, okay, buy for me things. Uh, but in a sense, like, like, I don't actually, I don't have a habit of going out to buy it. So I don't actually buy, you know, hot drink whenever, every morning. Instead of they, 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 they do it. I said, for me, like, I don't buy it in the first place. <laughs> right, so I don't actually need straws. Because I didn't use straws. I, I was keeping the straw with me wherever I go. And then I was like, I don't buy straw. I don't buy things to, have, to use the straw for. <laughs> so now I'm buying it, this bag is a straw. <laughs> okay, but it's not so it's just, like, if you don't even use it, you don't have to make all these re- uh, invisible things because you don't use it in the first place. Right, bring bottles around. And it's drinking your bottles. It's good enough for you, right? <laughs> MashaAllah, Allah help us now. Allah help us. 
Alhamdulillah, uh, we're gonna finish off the chapter so that next week we can. Oh, oh no, not anyone in the end of the chapter. Uh, no, actually, I wanted to finish off. I just got a bit more. I'm gonna go to the subsection. The subsection is where? It's not here it's in, the, in, the, in the Arabic. I don't know. Um, okay, I'll read out the subsection. So if you say, so he says here, فَإِنْ قُلْتَ فَبَيْهِنْ لَنَا أَوَلًا فَبَيْهِنْ لَنَا أَوَلًا حِكْمَ الْحَرَامِ وَشُبَهَةِ وَحَدَّهُمَا فَأَقُولُ فَأَقُولُ لِعُمْرُ اللَّهِ لَقَدْ أَشْبَعَنَا الْقَوْلَ فيه في أسرار مع معاملات الدين وذكرنا له كتابا مفردا في كتاب الإحياء لكن نشي لكن نشير إلى كلمات مفردة بحيث تصل إلى فهم الضعيف المبتدي إذا إلى إلى إذ مقصود هذا الكتاب أن ينتفع به المبتدي في العبادة ويعين الطالب. So he says, I said there. So he says here. So he says here. So he says here. I should tell us. So you may say, explain to us first and for first 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 for all the nature of the unlawful and the dubious, and give us their precise definition. So in Arabic he says here. Right, someone says, you know, clarify for us, right, what is the wisdom between haram and shubahat? Tell us. What some people will say about it? They say, tell us why is it haram? Why is it shubahat? Why cannot eat so much halal? Why cannot? They ask all these whys. Right? And Imam Ghazali says, you know, he says, he actually exclaims, eh? he exclaims. And he says, let me therefore tell you by Allah's eternal life. You know, meaning, uh, <laughs> and he says, he exclaims by, by, by Allah's life. His eternal, his eternal life. Let me tell you that we have spoken about this in our other books, Secrets of of, of Religious Practices, and also in a separate chapter in the Ikhya al Mudin. But okay, we should now provide some quick, uh, some quick words for you, because you may assume, <laughs> so that you may achieve the understanding of the feeble novice, since the present book is to benefit the novice in the worshipful service and to assist the seeker. Okay, in Arabic it says, in, Ar- in English the translator is very uh, kind by using a very difficult word. <laughs> so nobody understands what he actually just said. <laughs> right, but actually in the Arabic he says, you know, well, we will, we will explain this to you, okay. Right, and he says that, Masayana uh, Muhammad is the... He says that we won't, we won't explain it to you, right? Uh, because, so he says, so by the life of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have ashba'ana al kaul. Ashba'ana al we have spoken about it to the point we are so full of it. <laughs> and you can go and check our book, Asrar, you can check our book, Asrar, and check our book, Al-Ikhya, but, Nushiru ila kalimatin mufradatin, we will speak, we will point towards some very easy uh, principles, you know, some, you know, taglines lah. That you might want to, that you might want to hold on to, you know, some sentences or some phrases, some words of wisdom that you can hold on to. That he says, behind the sinu ila fahmi da'i fil mubtadi, right? So that it can, so that it can reach the understanding of the beginner who is still weak. Right? He knows that, and he says, and that the, the point of this book that we're reading here, you know, Mishnah Abidin, is so that this this meanings will reach to the beginner who is still weak. <laughs> and, and and to help the, the 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 student on the path, the point of this book is to help those who are beginners right, on the path to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Okay, you must have learned Ghazali. The way he speaks, right, is that he's a very uh, he's, he's coming to the end of his life, and it's he's very sincere. You mentioned before he's very sincere for what he's doing, and he wants people to stop making excuses for themselves, and he wants them to buck up. He wants them to it. <laughs> Right, to raise his life seriously, start throwing out all things unnecessary in life, and focus on your on your road to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So that's why he's, the way he speaks is the way he speaks. He's speaking to us like a teacher, right, so you can understand. You can imagine like, like an older man, like an old sheikh, right, who has understood all these realities, and he's saying to you, you know, you want to ask questions. Okay, I have other books. 
Okay, but they all understand. I'll say a few things, okay? And some people they are they have you know a bit more difficulty in understanding. Some people are beginners, right? So I will, and we're all beginners, and we're all difficult in understanding. <laughs> all the I'm all weak, all weak in our understanding. And may, may Allah um, uh, help us like, in our situation. So Imam Ghazali's books is really not for the weak hearted because he does say things that people of our time might think that is so harsh, <laughs> like, so sharp. He's so, mashallah, you know. But it's really to understand that he is coming from a very sincere place and to understand that the Muslims of the past, they were very blunt. It's Muslims today who cannot take <laughs> The blindness, they can't take it. And so you try to try to advise them. You have to go, you know, very, you know, around the bush, very sweet. Try to get an, some meaning across, <laughs> so you don't actually offend anybody. Or, you know, subhanallah. People a long time ago used to be uh, tougher. They used to be tougher when it comes to feedback, right? From especially from the teachers, they can hear anything, right? And uh, uh, and there was once there was this, this a story like end, end of story. There was this sheikh, right, uh, who he came to his teacher's house, right, and the teacher is a sheikh, you know, and the teacher called him, you know, oh beginner, right, you know, oh beginner, and he, he he was offended, call me beginner, sheikh, like, oh beginner or or something of something, very very you know, uh, like a, like a very lowly term lah, and the sheikh saw his face, and the sheikh said to him, come with me. And he brought him to his library, right? and he saw all the books in his library. And the Shay said, "I have memorized not to, not, 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 not to boast, eh? that I have memorized every book in this library. And it's all the study books. And even then, my teacher would always call me a beginner. And so, <laughs> and they would they, they don't think you are anywhere with your knowledge or with your progress, with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala." If someone calls you, you know that oh, you're still you're you're, you're weak. You're, you're weak in your understanding. We are very weak in our understanding. We're very weak. I don't be offended. Do you, you think that you're so smart? <laughs> we are all weak in our understanding. It's okay. It's okay to be weak as long as you can recognize that and work on it. Right? What is blameworthy is a people who cannot recognize their weaknesses and their faults, and they never work on it. That is blameworthy. But to be weak. You know, or to be not strong in your memory, or to be, you know, uh, not very good in your istiqama or whatsoever, right? It is a, it's a feeling of the human being. It's something that the human being has. Work on it. That's it. Work on it. Don't feel bad about yourself. <laughs> just see, okay, I'm human. Let me just try harder. Stop. Okay, I'm going to stop there for today. Okay. So, uh, what are some of the few words he said? Uh, next week. Oh. <laughs> his few words are these. Oh, I thought you were finish the section. No, his few words. His few words is a, few words is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, the entire <laughs> subsection. These are his <laughs> few words. His few words. He he literally he's in every kalimatin, kalimatin mufradatin in like some individual sentences that I'm going to say to you all. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just like this is this in the few words. <laughs> this one. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I mean, really, so it's important to learn from the ulama. It keeps you humble. It really it humbles you. <laughs> right, and the, the biggest issue of our time now, with our youngsters, with those who question the religion, is that they have not sat with the ulama. They don't know what is knowledge and who are the people of caliber and taqwa. So they question, and they question Imam Shafi, and they question all these great ulama. You don't even know who these people are to be able to question them. Right? And so that this arrogance is very, you know, Imam uh, uh, himself says, it is, it is, it is jahal murakab. Uh, uh, it's ignorance that, that, that sits on ignorance. <laughs> uh, it's ignorance that, 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 that sits on each other. Uh, it's, 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 you know, like Malay like, would say, like, in a sense. Like like bodo on top, bodo on top, bodo on top. In a sense, like, like like it is over one over another. That is so deep, it's so hard to even penetrate. Also, the arrogance is there. May Allah protect us from this and protect our children. Uh, it's alarming and it's scary like, that uh, in our time the number of I'm not the only one, but a lot of a lot of the are getting a lot of cases. 
uh, of young children uh, already having a lot of questions and doubts about this religion that we all, alhamdulillah, just never had. But they all, at very young ages, they will start questioning me. Allah SWT protect them right, that they don't actually go into this kind of uh, waswasa. It's all whispering to the shaitan right, and they think that all of these things are correct and they are good that they see in society or they see in the media. Right? And then they end from there they begin to look at Islam and they don't agree with Islam anymore. These are all dangerous. Right? It comes it comes from the time. It is our zaman. Right? It gives us all these things right? and it gives very strange ideologies that make people reject right, what we have been taught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by Rasulullah. That's why that for, for, for us in our time like to pray together is very important. Uh, to do zikr together is very important. To have conversations with your children is very important. I uh, just see where their minds are going and what are they absorbing, and also to limit like, what they are exposed to. I don't think all these out there are actually innocent things. They are not. I like, limit like, what they are exposed to. You don't know before you know it. You know people around you are all living the religion. They wonder what's going on. Like, it is the end of that. Like, it is. Right? We, we cannot. We cannot be. We cannot be in the dark anymore. We must understand that they are being exposed to a lot of uh, dangers. Right? So all the more the fortresses right, need to be erected as early as possible right, to protect them right, from the poisons that is out there before the poisons go to their blood, into their, into their hearts and corrupt their iman. Allah protect them. InshaAllah. أن الله يرزق العلم النافع وعمل مقاصد المستعلم دل الهدى ويسر به قاب النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم إلى أرواح معلمنا مشيخنا وذوي الحقوق علينا وإذا حوض النبي محمد صلى الله عليه يا كن عمد ويا كن استعين إلى سرور المستقيم سرور الذين لم تعليهم والعصر إن السنة في القصر إلى الذين آمنوا وعملوا صالحات وصالحات سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك